Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are actually going to implement the wandering behavior into our 2D flocking AI in Unity. Now right off the bat we can see that we have an issue and this is actually coming up from the previous video and I noticed this issue when I was doing my editing of the video but I didn't have time to fix it then so we're going to fix it right now. Now this error is actually coming from our level script so let's go ahead and open it up. Let me drag it over here for you guys. And inside of our for each loop, we have an if statement that says if other member is equal to member. But this is an assignment operator and not a comparison operator. So we just need to add an extra equals there. Go back out to our scene and it should be fixed. Awesome. It is. Okay, now in this video, what we're actually going to do is open up our member script here. We're going to start adding in some functions. So in our last video, we added several of the helper functions that we're going to need. But for this video, we just need to add in two more functions. We're going to add in a void update function. And we're going to add in a protected function that returns a vector 3. And we can call this wander. We don't need any parameters for this function. And basically what this function is going to do is create a wandering steer behavior that looks a little more meaningful. So the first thing we need to do is create a new float that we can just call jitter. And we can set this equal to our conf dot wander jitter multiplied by our time dot delta time. Okay, cool. Now the next thing we actually need to do is get a small random vector. So what we need to do is actually scroll back up to the top here under our variables. And we're going to add a private vector three that we can call wander target here. Okay, cool. And inside of our wander function, we're going to actually say our wander target is plus equals to a new vector three. We're going to use our random binomial function multiplied by our jitter, again the random binomial function, multiplied by jitter in the y, and then for the z we're just going to pass 0. Now we need to actually normalize the wander target, so we're going to say wander target is equal to wander target dot normalized. And what we want to do now is actually increase the, the length of this wander target to be the same as the radius for, for our wander circle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that our wander target times equals our conf dot wander whoops wander radius now we actually want to get this vector 3 in our local space so we're going to create a new vector 3 here called target in local space and we can just say is equal to our wander target plus a new vector 3 and for this vector 3 we're going to pass in 0 our conf dot wander distance and 0 for the z now we need to actually move this from local space to world space. So we're going to create another vector three here that we can call target in world space. And we're going to set that equal to transform dot transform point. And we're just going to pass in our target in local space here. Now the last thing we need to do is actually steer towards our world space target. So we're going to say target in world space minus equals this dot position before finally returning our target in world space dot normalized. Okay, cool. So let's just go through this function really quickly so that we understand what it does. Basically, we're just getting a jitter variable at the top. Then we're creating a small random vector. We are reprojecting that vector back onto the unit circle before increasing the length of the vector to be the same as the radius of our wander circle. Then we get the position in local space before getting the position in target space. And finally, we're steering towards it before returning it. Now, in order for this to work, we actually need to do some updates to our update function. So let's go ahead and start that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is set our acceleration equal to the wander function. And this is actually going to change over the coming scripts, but for now, this will work. The next thing we're going to do is actually clamp our acceleration. So we're going to say our acceleration is equal to vector 3 dot clamp magnitude. And we're going to pass in our acceleration here and our conf dot max acceleration. And now we actually want to get our Euler angles integrated. So we're going to say that our velocity is equal to velocity plus our acceleration multiplied by time dot delta time here. And we want to again clamp our velocity. So we're going to say velocity is equal to vector 3 dot clamp magnitude velocity and our conf dot max 
velocity. Whoops, okay, there we go. Now we need to update our position, so we're going to say position is equal to position plus our velocity multiplied by time dot delta time here. And now what we actually wanna do is check to see if we should wrap around, so we can just call our wrap around function here and we can just pass in a reference of our position, the negative level dot bounds and a positive level dot bounds. And let's go ahead and actually check to make sure that these variables exist. I know we set those up in a, or I believe we set those up in a previous video. So we'll just check on the level here. And as we can see, the bounds are actually set up. So let's go back to our member script because we have one final thing we need to do here. And basically what we're going to do is update our transform.position. So we're gonna say transform.position is equal to our position variable. Okay, now let's go ahead and save that. And let's go back out to our scene. Whoops, looks like we have an issue. Method group and float. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so it's not liking us multiplying random binomial by jitter. So let's look at our random binomial function. It's returning a float value. That is definitely interesting. Let's set it to zero in the X and just see what happens. Whoops. I don't think that's gonna take care of it. Okay, it's really not liking this for some reason. All right, let's look at our random binomial function one more time just to make sure this looks good. This looks all good here. Now, why does it not like random binomial? Oh, well that's why, duh. Gotta add the parentheses. <laughs> Sorry about that guys, I bet you were looking at it like Jared. It's right there. I got it though, took me a little while, but I got it. Okay, now let's actually go back to our project folder here and we're going to add a new, we're going to need to add some prefabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my prefabs folder here and in my hierarchy, I'm going to create empty and I'm just gonna change this name to member and we're going to add a sprite render. For the sprite, we can just use the knob sprite. Let's up the scale of this one to 30 by 30. That may be too big. Let's see what it looks like in game. Okay, that's not too big, that's fine. And let's change the color to green. So let's make it a little more vibrant. There we go. And we also need to add in our member script. So let's go ahead and add that guy in here. And we don't need to add any anything else to this prefab, so we can actually just go ahead and drag it into our prefabs folder. Now let's right click and create another empty one and we can just call this one enemy. This one won't really be useful yet, but it will in the future. So we're going to change the scale of this one to 40 by 40. We're going to add a sprite renderer to it. Again, we can just go with the knob or really whatever image you want to use. And we can just change the color of this one to a red. Let's go a little more vibrant again. Okay, cool. And finally, we can just, for now, add in our member script. We'll change this out a little later, though, and that should do it for this one. So let's drag it into our prefabs folder, and now let's delete these two here. Let's click on our level now, and as you can see, we need to add our prefab. So let's add our member prefab to the member prefab area and our enemy prefab to the enemy prefab area. Okay, cool. So as you may remember in a previous video, we set up these other variables. So we don't have to worry about those, but we do need to set up some variables for the member config script. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so for my max FOV, I've got it to 180 right now. I'm gonna change it to 120. We're not using that variable right now, but I find 120 is more realistic. For our max acceleration, I'm gonna set it to a value of 40. And for our max velocity, we're gonna go with 25. Okay, we are gonna to need to set up the wander parameters here, or wander variables here. So we're going to, we are going to give our wander jitter a value of 10 our wander radius a value of two, our wander distance a value of three, and our priority doesn't really matter right now, but let's go ahead and give it a value of 10 because we will need that in a later video. Okay, now let's go ahead and save it. Press play. And they are starting off fairly slowly, but we'll fix that in a little bit later tutorial. As we can see, they are pretty much all moving up in the Y right now. And I'll go back to my script to show you why that is in just a minute. But for right now, you know, we can definitely see that this is some fairly randomized behavior occurring. So that's pretty cool. 
And let's also look at our members to make sure we are getting a bunch of members instantiated. We're getting 205, which is exactly correct. And it looks like our bounds are working. You know, this kind of looks like uh, carbonation in a soda or something. So, you know, you guys can definitely use that this for that if you wanted to. All right, let's go ahead and stop that now. Okay, coders, so that is going to do it for this video. In the next video, we, we are going to integrate our cohesion behavior. So we'll start introducing some more of the AI. So be sure to look out for that one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.